far, we have only seen up to 1.2 meters or roughly uh, five feet, right? So that's important. And, and what else is important for people and viewers tuning in around the world as they wake up this morning on this first day of 2024 is that the tsunami threat and the threat of aftershocks has not yet waned. Uh, remember that tsunamis is they're not just one initial wave. They are a series of waves, and sometimes the timing between the crests of the waves, uh, that is from wave uh, height to wave height, that can happen between five minutes to upwards of an hour or even longer. So the threat continues for the west coast of Japan. The threat continues for portions of Russia and into the Korean Peninsula as well. This is the latest warning map from the Japan Meteorological Agency. And uh, we're focusing in on the Ishikawa Prefecture because it's that shading of purple. That is a major tsunami warning. They haven't issued one since the devastating tsunami that occurred in 2011. But nonetheless, there are warnings and advisories that span the entire western coastline of Japan as far north as Hokkaido. Remember, shaking was felt as far east as Tokyo. So the observed tsunami wave heights that we've seen so far, 1.2 meters. That is in the Ishikawa prefecture. And remember, uh, these projections of how high these waves could become is all based on local topography because uh, a tsunami wave is not equal in height. It's all dependent on the seabed, the bathymetry across that shoreline, how the wave plays out. Uh, but bottom line is that the tectonic plates have shifted near the west coast of Japan, and that caused a displacement in the ocean's water and that has allowed for the tsunami wave to occur and of course the ongoing threat being that this is a series of waves that could impact uh, the region and in fact we could see some tsunami waves still into portions of the Korean Peninsula and Russia as well.